Warning, do not AFK macro or exploit on Miner's Haven. You are not given second chances as it's not allowed here unlike other games. The devs and moderators are very good at what they do and they will find out if you're breaking the rules. So please, so you don't end up banned later on, just don't do it. Thanks. Miner's Haven is a sandbox tycoon released on June 6th, 2015 on Roblox. It's considered to be one of the most liked games in its genre and has always performed quite well on the platform. Over the many years it's been around, the game has become much, much larger in terms of content, items, activities, and overall size. The game went from a simple DIY tycoon to a game filled with lore, mazes, super dedicated players, and tycoon setups so advanced that devs try to patch them. In this video, we will break down a majority of the game's content for newer players and really give you a better understanding. Huge thanks to Trillinisty for editing this video, his channel will be linked in the description. Enjoy. In case you ever want to make friends to play with, ask questions about the game, be closer with the community, or even like report exploiters and stuff, uh, there's two official Discord servers associated with the game. One is known as Brezza Games Discord, and the other is Miner's Haven 100, both of which are down in the description. In the description, there's also a link to the Miner's Haven Wikia. It basically contains info about every item in the game. Uh, aspects about the game, all of that stuff in a non-video format. It's amazing for just grabbing stuff that you don't know about items, NPCs, pretty much whatever. While there are a large amount of NPCs in the game, you're probably not going to be using most of these until later on in your journey. So I pretty much compiled most of the ones that you'll be using either early on or at least around the beginning area of the game, or just ones that you probably should know about in case. Now first off, we have Farguild. You could find Farguild over by the bridge on the side of the mountain near the waterfall. You could click on him, and each day when you do this, you get you see boxes or really other types of rewards. You could only use him once a day per slot, so that means up to five times a day if you go on him each slot. Second, we have the Masked Man. The Masked Man is a traveling NPC that arrives Thursday at Daily Reset, which we'll cover later in the video, and leaves at Daily Reset on Monday. Every day he is on the map, he changes locations, and his inventory changes as well. He often sells very high tier items, seasonal items, or exclusive items only obtainable through him at the cost of UC, research points, or even in-game cash. However, only one item costs Robux, being the Nebula set, which we'll talk about later. Changing servers also does not change his inventory, it is set for that day. Third is the Craftsman. The Craftsman is an NPC in the tower on top of the mountain in the middle of the map. He has a variety of actions you could perform while visiting him. You could salvage items for shards of life, merge reborn items into reborn evolutions, fuse reborns together to create reborn fusions, or you could even buy reborn items using shards of life. You could lastly forge enchanted items. Most of these will be locked until later in the game, however, a few of these are good to know early on and will be featured in the video. Lastly is Erebus. Erebus is an NPC you could find on an island on the side of the Voidgate area accessible through a portal in this forest. Kinda hard to find, but I'll show you here. Interacting with this NPC will bring up a series of prompts allowing you to wipe the current save data on the currently active slot. It has about five or so confirmation prompts, if not more, so the likelihood of you accidentally wiping your slot is very, very, very low, if not zero. Be careful though, as the developers are likely not going to offer a data rollback if you, you know, wipe it. They will, however, likely assist in times of unintentional data loss caused by bugs or outages on Roblox servers. Just a heads up, you could only wipe a slot once, so use this wisely. Really quick, let's go over some of the game passes. Before we get into the topic, I think you should know that you don't need to buy these in order to finish the game from start to finish, but they are available there at your hands if you want them. Let's take a look at what they are. First is the VIP membership. Miner Savings VIP Game Pass costs about 80 Robux. For what it's worth, it gives quite a handful of benefits. Upon purchasing, you will receive... 25 VIP conveyors, a VIP tag in the chat, a free crate in your daily gift of at least gold tier or better, higher regular mystery box chance drop rates and crates, a spawnable doge pet, and increased daily gift luck. While most of these perks will benefit you to early mid-game progression, you do get some long-term benefits with the boxes and stuff, so it's definitely worth picking up. 
Next up is the premium membership. Miner's Haven's premium game pass costs about 800 Robux and awards the player much greater benefits. Upon purchasing, you will receive a premium tag in chat, four times increase in magnificent boxes upon opening on real boxes, 10 UC in daily gift instead of one, golden particles on your character, complete removal of RP requirements and shop items, and a rainbow path giver. This game pass is packed to its limits with benefits, especially the removal of RP requirements, which will save you a ridiculous amount of time later on. The increased job chance for magnificent boxes is also very, very rewarding in late game. Definitely try to pick this one up if you can. Now we have the largest one being the executive membership, which costs around 2,450 Robux. Upon purchasing, you will receive an executive tag in chat, two exclusive Fable tier items, one of which is an upgrader and the other is a speed boost infuser. You will also receive a free Inferno box in every daily gift, a free executive crate in daily gifts, which boosts your stats and has a chance to give Inferno boxes and Lucky Clovers, also up to six free UC in your daily gift, which stacks with the previous UC bonuses from other game passes, red particles on your character, a mini gun, and a 700 cell increase to base size. This is probably the most important game pass due to the large amount of bonuses, items, and increased base size. Seriously, if you can pick this one up, you won't regret it. Then there is the Dark Knight. This is a much smaller game pass that is worth the 725 Robux to buy it. Purchasing it will award you a Dark Knight tag in chat, additional 20 health and three walk speed. Spawning in will give you Shadow Orb and Dark Knight Sword and two items, one of which is an upgrader and the other is a stat booster. Although rather small, this game pass is definitely worth the upgrader and the infuser as they're going to help long term. There's also the shiny charm. Although not the most useful game pass until later on, for serious players it's well worth the 1000 robux. Upon purchasing, you will receive a permanent increase in shiny reborn drops going from the original 1 in 1024 drop chance to a 1 in 717 drop chance. Once again, mostly useful for endgame, but definitely worth picking up if you're serious about the game. The base radio is another small game pass, purchasable for 200 Robux. The game pass allows you to give your base custom Roblox music via the Roblox sound ID system. Although small, definitely kind of cool. Exclusively purchasable from the Masked Man, you could buy the Nebula set for 300 Robux. It gives you two exclusive items, one being the Nebula and the Receiver. It's an older game pass that's been very well liked by the community and allows you to teleport wars from wherever they are, even off of the base, to the Receiver at the click of a button. Lastly, there is the Shout Colorizer for 40 Robux. This game pass allows you to change your message color when shouting. If you tend to shout often, this is probably worth picking up. And that's about it for the Miner's Haven game passes. Hopefully this helped you decide on what to get and what not to get. Research points are a secondary currency in Miner's Haven. While only being used occasionally for buying stuff, they're mostly used early on to balance out the rate you progress via the shop. You might have noticed some items cannot be purchased until you have X amount of research points. The system is actually quite respectable, it's, it's not a difficult one to learn. You can farm research points quite easily, actually. In the shop, you'll notice items with the name Research Center or a variation of it. These items are used for farming research points. How they work is rather simple. You put X amount of ores into the center, worth at least X amount of money or more, and in return you get X amount of research points. It's quite simple, but not the fastest thing ever, sadly. You can speed up the rate you get research points by a huge amount early on. Research crates are definitely the best way to go, in my opinion, at least for getting research points fast. Research crates have tiers. Normal. Shadow, Gold, Lucky, UC, and Diamond. The higher the crate, you get more research points with the lowest tier, giving you a full-blown 400. The better ones give you multiple thousand research points, which is amazing early on, and you also get more loot like boxes and stuff, or even UC or Lucky Clovers depending on the crate. UC is another currency in Miner's Haven. You could get UC from NPCs, crates, or buying more with Robux. Its early game benefits are crazy important, and some of the items you could buy with UC definitely have helped players even in the game's end content. When buying items with UC, try to focus more on getting use out of the item you want to buy. Like conveyors, mines, teleporters, upgraders, all that stuff. Personally, my favorite items are probably the rainbow set items, the scavenger items, and the green and yellow teleporters. While the mines are very good early on, they won't serve much purpose later on. Also, the reversible conveyor is one of the few items in the game you'll probably have in your setup at all times. Definitely one to pick up for later. 
Boxes are a very important mechanic in the game. While most boxes you could get just from playing, some boxes are event specific, milestone locked, or code exclusives. They could give you all sorts of items, including the UC purchasable items I mentioned just before this. Some items in boxes are also event specific too. So always check the wikia or the update logs to see what's in the prize pool if you want exclusive stuff. Let's talk about vintages. Vintages are rarer items obtainable in specific boxes. They are mostly there to help you with early to mid game content, but some of them have been used even in late game. Vintages are definitely worth trying to get all of them as they could make your progression speed up a crazy amount. Exotics are also really, really important to the game. Exotics have been coming and going in the game's item economy for years and matter a lot to the player base. They are event exclusive and come around based on the season of the year. These are very, very, very important even in the endgame content, and almost always have a role in the game. If you can, get as many of these as you can. They can be a huge pain to get all of them though, and some won't ever even be returning as, like I said, they are limited time and very, very rare. Rebirthing is the game's main mechanic, and will always be the main purpose of the game. You need to get X amount of money to reach X rebirth. Upon rebirthing, you will receive one reborn tier item. These items are very good most of the time and are used all the way to the late game. The more you rebirth, however, the higher the reborn price goes. The reborn price will eventually stop going up at about 80,000 rebirths, with a reborn price of about 1e plus 240. Life skipping is a fairly easy to learn concept with somewhat difficult to execute requirements early on. In order to skip a rebirth, you must get one full cash suffix above your rebirth price when rebirth. Thing. Skipping lives is completely optional, and I wouldn't really recommend it much early on, as when skipping max lives, which is 20 skips per rebirth, you only get up to 3 reborn items. The earlier you are in the game, you want to have more items to make rebirthing easier, so try to avoid skipping early on. As I mentioned in the NPC section of the video, you could evolve reborn items at the Craftsman. Evolving a reborn item will require X amount of a specific reborn to craft one evolved version with better stats than the original. I suggest looking at the wikia before crafting evolved reborns, as buying blueprints can be pretty pricey, so make sure you know which one you want to buy, as some are much better than others. Shards of life are another currency here in Miner's Haven. They are obtained via life skipping and can be used for crafting stuff at the craftsman or buying reborn items from him. For every two rebirth skips you do, you get one shard of life back meaning you could get up to 10 shards per rebirth when skipping 20. Shards of life could also be used from time to time when buying items from the masked man. Having many shards of life will also power up the shard park and the shard city. Daily reset is when the game's cycle starts again. Every day at 7 p.m. EST, every once per day activity is now doable once more. This means you could get loot from Far Guild again at this time, open another daily gift, the reborn shop updates, and if Masked Man is on the map, he'll either change inventory or leave depending on what day it is, or he will even arrive if it's Thursday. A lot happens at this time, and a lot more than what I even mentioned, and it's best to get on and do your daily stuff again at this time, but just note that you may need to change servers to see certain things change, however most will just work in the same server. Well, that's the end of the first video in the series. These videos do tend to take a bit of time to make, so expect the next two coming within a few days or so. This is one of the first kinds of these videos I've ever made, so please, feedback would be amazing. I seriously appreciate y'all helping me out with this channel, and if you guys could help me reach 5,000 subs, that would actually be really, really cool, as it's been my goal for a while now. Hopefully this video helped you in some way. If not, then the next ones probably will, as they cover later game topics. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Peace.